Will Shane Dern. Mr Speaker, it's always interesting to follow after the former member for uh, the West Coast, Tasman, uh, particularly on issues dairy industry. In fact, uh, the member was the chair of the Primary Produ Production Select Committee at the time that the uh, Dairy Industry Restructuring Act uh, 2001 was passed through that committee. So I know that he knows a little bit about the detail. I also want to congratulate the Minister on his fine contribution. I know his history is in the dairy industry as well. He grew up on a dairy farm, which I know he doesn't really want to advertise that much, but he grew up on a dairy farm in the Waikato, in the heart of uh, the uh, 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 Waikato, uh, and uh, has a history there. Fonterra, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, the Fonterra debate is an interesting one that's been going on right since the time that Fonterra was formed. Fonterra is only part of the dairy industry. There are 20 exporting companies now in the industry, but it is by far the most dominant player. It is 84% of exported product out of New Zealand, 84%. You hear all these figures bandied around. Sometimes it's useful to have a few facts injected into the, into the debate. 84% of exported product, dairy product out of New Zealand, around about 91 to 92% of total milk uh, processed in the country. That includes the regulated milk that this piece of legislation covers. This debate about the raw milk is only part of the equation. And the review yesterday, or the, the review announced yesterday, is to look at the eligibility of that raw milk to competitors. And that is going to be the interesting part of the, of the uh, equation going forward, I guess, Mr Speaker. There is a debate, and it's a legitimate one, about who should be eligible to receive up to 50 million litres of raw milk delivered to their processing site in a Fonterra tanker. And it's a legitimate debate. And I'm looking forward to the submission process in the Primary Production Select Committee when that uh, takes place. Can I also say to you, Mr Speaker, that going forward, if we do not protect the critical mass that Frontera has, then we are in danger of fracturing it like we see in the meat and wool industry, and we are in danger of losing value. There is no doubt about that. I don't know why it is difficult to understand in this country that when we play the Springboks in rugby, we see in the All Blacks, who are a total monopoly. A total monopoly. There is no competition within New Zealand to the All Blacks. But when we sell cheese or meat or wool or something else like that, uh, then we need to send the Taranaki team uh, to sell that product. And that, that part of it... That part of it is something I've, I've, I've been challenged by, I have to say, and there's been vigorous debate over the whole time that, uh, that I've been involved in this uh, uh, process. Can I also say to you, Mr Speaker, that during the select committee process, which looked at the farm gate plus 10 cents uh, uh, change to the DERA Act, which we did recently, there were a whole lot of interesting issues came up about how some of the very small entrepreneurial and sometimes unique uh, in the world companies can be protected. And this bill, Mr Speaker, is designed to try and get a balance between how we provide milk to these small cottage industries, uh, some of them not so small, uh, some of them that uh, provide a very, very diverse uh, dynamic within the private uh, uh, capacity of them companies and also within the New Zealand dairy industry as a whole, uh, how we protect them so that they don't get run over by a large performer and player like Fonterra, at the same time as we allow Fonterra to go forth, if you like, and export against 150 countries and continue to maintain a strong market uh, branding and strong market position in those markets. So striking that balance, Mr Speaker, uh, is challenging. This review that the Minister announced yesterday I think is very timely. It's certainly something I've pushed for for a long time. I know that those that are shareholders of Fonterra, and bear in mind that there are only 10,300 shareholders in Fonterra, of which I am one, and I declare an interest, Mr Speaker, in that. Uh, at this point in time, Mr Speaker, they are keen to see the detail around how that raw milk competition uh, can be fairly uh, so that they are not disadvantaged 
regulated at the same time as providing that raw milk that is so necessary to some of those small companies. So, Mr Speaker, I look forward to the bill coming to the Primary Production Select Committee. I know uh, most of the players that will submit to that committee, and I look forward to seeing them there, uh, Mr Speaker. And I also know that the Labor opposition are basically in support of the concept, despite some of the rhetoric that we hear from the other side of the House. And I'm sure that at the end of that process, a sensible, pragmatic approach will be found and the, and the bill will pass through the Parliament in a timely way. Mr Speaker.